during this time that I did read one book about Islam in the public library because I had never heard of Islam um, uh, uh, ever. Um, but I remember I was looking in the religious section in, in the library at, at, at school and there was a book about Islam. And uh, or it was in the library, the public library, and I remember it was some title like Why I'm Not a Muslim or, or some, you know, one of these titles that, that was uh, propagandistic against Islam, but I, I, I had no idea. So I just took the book and I read it and I remember it said that Muslims, uh, M-O-S-L-E-M-S, -E and any of you knowing Arabic knows that's a very derogatory word. A Muslim is someone who oppresses someone else. That's a very quick sleight of the pen that was used in the past for a very real purpose. Um, it said that Muslims were people who uh, worshipped a moon god named, named Allah, uh, who lived in a box in the desert in Saudi Arabia, and uh, they were oppressive to women. I remember there was a whole chapter about how they could have four wives and as many as they want actually because they could marry two, divorce one, get three more, you know, this whole, you know, um, and, it, and it, it said that, you know, uh, uh, I remember the, the, the one thing that really caught my attention was the whole uh, chapter on jihad where it said that Muslims were allowed to kill non-Muslims at any time, at any place, without discretion and it was an honorable act and not only would they go to heaven before it but they would get 70 versions on the way you know, so I closed the book on Islam put it back on the shelf and marked off Islam off my little list of religions and said thanks but no thanks and if I ever see a Muslim I am out um, and I said I'm pretty safe in Greenville, South Carolina I had never seen a Muslim ever so I said you know, I don't have to worry about running into no Muslims, thank God so, you know, I, 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 I started, you know, just worshiping, you know, I tried to just be a good person, you know, pray to God, ask Him for guidance, try to be a genuinely good person. Um, and I remember the, the, what changed is when I met a Muslim. I met a Muslim who I had met a couple of times at school. We had went to school together, and I knew him, but I never knew that he was Muslim. And, and there's a couple of reasons why I never knew he was Muslim. Uh, because he was African American, number one, and the book said that Muslims were Arabs. And number two, I didn't know, you know, I thought Muslims ran around, you know, marrying as many women as they want and killing non-Muslims. I didn't know that they could also be part-time drug dealers. So I didn't know, I never knew that this guy was Muslim. I didn't put two and two together. So we were at his house one day. And me and my, my, my other friend, the one that, you know, I got into a lot of trouble with, I'm trying to keep him out of trouble now. Um, we were at his house and we were debating something about religion. I, for, I forget what even the topic was, but you know, he had two teenagers thinking they know everything. Um, and I was trying to explain something to him about the Bible. Uh, and that guy came in and, and was listening. He said, have you ever heard of Islam? I said, yes, I've heard all about Islam. <laughs> he was like, okay, so what do you think of it? I said, what do you mean what I think of it? That's probably the worst religion I've ever seen on the face of the planet. He's like, why? And he's like, but I'm a Muslim. I was like, man, stop playing. <laughs> you know, like, you're, you're, you're an African American. You know, he's like, so? I'm like, the book said you guys were Arab. They, all the, the Muslims were Arabs. He, and, and he was like, what else did you read in the book? And I told him, he was like, man, what in the, you know, what have you been reading? <laughs> he's like, you need to, 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 to go uh, to the mosque for Juma. He's like, I, he, he told me, he said, I'm not a good Muslim. This is what he said to me. He said, I'm not a good Muslim. I, I'm not even going to... Uh, try to front and say I'm a good Muslim. He said, but I can guide you to some people that can tell you the real truth about Islam uh, because he know about my story about wanting to find religion. And he said, you need to go to the mosque for Juma. And I said, what's, what's Juma? He said, it's just like church with no chairs. <laughs> and I said, I can do church with no chairs because in church the chairs were the worst part anyway. <laughs> because they have these hard benches that you sit on that are like this and are so hard. I said, that's good that you sit on carpet? Wow, man, they should, every church should be like that. And uh, I said, where's the mosque? He said, it's on Whitehampton Boulevard. I said, where on Whitehampton Boulevard? I, I lived on Whitehampton Boulevard. I lived right off of Whitehampton Boulevard. He said, you know where Lee Road intersects with Whitehampton? I said, yeah, yeah, I, I live on the other side of the intersection. He said, it's right there. I said, no, it's not. There's nothing. There's a gas station or a church. He said, yeah, you know that church, the evangelical missionary training facility? I said, yeah, I used to take missionary classes there. He said, you know that building in, in the parking lot with the gold thing on top? I said, the, yeah, the gym? He was like, no, that's the mosque.
because I had always thought it was the gym because it was in the same parking lot and it was just rectangular with two glass doors in the front and you could literally walk in between the church and, and, and the masjid and touch them like this. Anyone doesn't believe me, go to Greenville, South Carolina, look at the masjid. You can almost touch the both of them just like this. <clears throat> he said, yeah, it's right there. I said, I've never, you know, at first I was shocked. Like, I've been living across the street from all these crazy Muslims all my life. <laughs> you know, I said, I never knew. You know, and he told me to go to Juma, and I asked him what time. He, he said he would meet me there at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. So I said, okay, I went on Friday. And I'm waiting outside for him. You know, I'm, I'm not going inside. That's not happening. Um, you know, and I'm seeing all these people going in. And at this time, it was a predominantly Indo-Paki Arab uh, masjid. Anyone who went in was, was not American, period. And I did not see even one uh, African-American going there. And, and I did see one. And then when he went in, I heard him talking in a dialect that I realized was, he was probably from Africa. And I said, he's not American. Um, so I'm not going, I'm waiting and I'm standing outside sitting on the church steps and the Imam pulls up and parks right in front of me who I had no idea he was the Imam but he got out and he asked me you know am I, am I waiting for someone this that and the other and I explained to him he said oh yeah we know this brother uh, you don't see him that, that, that much but we, we know who he is and, you know he said I'm glad you came you know he was a very very nice gentle young man um, and he invited me into the mosque and I kind of wanted to wait on my friend you know, but I didn't want, you know, at the same time, I didn't want to tell this man, I don't want to go in. So I went in, and they put me in the back and gave me a chair anyway. And I said, <laughs> I came to sit on the floor. And they gave me a chair anyway, you know, and all of these people are piled up in front of me. And there's no Americans here. And I'm starting to wonder, you know, uh, if this is a setup. Because it's starting to smell like a setup to me. Because in my mind, I'm like, you've been set up before, and this, this seems kind of like this. So, and I'm starting to think in my head, you know, scenarios, you know, a young mind at play. You know, I said, this, this, this other guy, my friend, he probably was in this same situation like me, and he probably made a deal with them to get out as long as he brought <laughs> other Americans and tricked them into coming to the mosque so they could do their jihad after Juma and get their 70 virgins. <laughs> so I'm sitting here, and there's all these people in front of me, and then there's a curtain with all these people behind me making noise and I have no idea who's back here. So I'm stuck in the middle of this. I hear that it's some women, uh, but I don't, you know, I, there's a curtain. I have no idea. So I'm like, there's something very odd about what's going on right here. I'm like, just let me make it. I'm starting to look for the exit. I'm like, you know, calculating how many people are between me and the exit. You know, I, I, I know some martial arts. So I said, I might hit a couple of them and I'm out. And then the imam came, and I, I, I just now realized that he was the imam because he got up on the minbar, you know, and they, and they started to call the adhan. And, you know, I said, okay, that man seemed nice. He seemed genuinely nice, so I, I felt a little more comfort. And then he got up uh, uh, after the, the adhan, and he started his khutbah. Inna alhamdulillah nahmaruhu wa I said, oh my God. I said, I bet you he's talking about me. You know, and he's being forceful, you know, he was getting loud and banging on the minbar and he's pointing in my direction. You know, I'm like, oh man, I got to get out of here really quick, you know. I said, well, I'm going to take my chance with the women behind me. I'm going through the curtain. I, I, I know him. Um, and, the, and, and so the imam started to pray and I, when he recited the Quran, I know it sounded very intriguing. I had no idea what it was. Um, but then when I saw Muslims bow and prostrate on the floor, verses and verses of every religious book that I had ever read started ringing off in my head that this was the way men of God prayed and the first thing that I could think of in my mind was this is worship that's what I said to myself this is not prayer because prayers are asking God for something these people are worshiping God uh, so I said to myself that you've written this you've written this religion off way too easily I, I thought I was a much more open-minded person than that and I was ashamed of myself that I had written it off with just one little book. You know, I had put all these studies into the other religions. I read this one thing about Islam and was done. So I went uh, to the Imam after, the, after Jum'a. I, I, you know, he talked to me. And I would have to say that I was probably a little bit rude with him. Um, and I've asked him to forgive me. The, you know, I saw him a few years later. I said, you got to forgive me for the first time you saw me. Because he started telling me, you know, uh, would you like to know a little bit more? He had a very heavy accent. He was an Egyptian brother. Would you like to know a little bit more about Islam? He tried to give me some pamphlets. I said, no, 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 no. I, I, don't, I don't want any of this right here. I said, do you have a book? This is what I wanted to know. Do you have a book? Can you give me? He said, yes, we have a book. Uh, I, I said, it's called the Quran. I said, can I read it? Uh, uh, is it in English? Can I read it? He said, sure, you can read it. And then he tried to explain it to me a little bit how it came by. I said, no. Nah. 
just give me the book because the book should speak for itself. Um, so I took the Quran home and on Friday night I started to read it because this is a book I had never seen before. Uh, and I was very interested. So I, I went home and I opened this, opened the Quran and I read the Fatiha. It seemed to me kind of like the Lord's Prayer, you know, it was a little, little similar to what I found in the Bible. Um, but then I started to read Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, I started to read Surah Ali Imran. And I started to see names that I had seen before. I started to see names like Abraham, Moses, David, Jesus, uh, Yahya, John the Baptist, Zechariah, Mary. And I said, I know all of these names, but there was something different about these people in this book. Uh, the prophets that I found in the Bible uh, were people that were deplorable, of, of not very character. These same men in the Quran were someone who were at the highest echelon of moral character and moral fiber. They were someone that was an example to be followed because they lived the message that they preached. Therefore, they were uh, able to be followed and emulated. So, I read all of these chapters and I, and I read the story of, of Jesus, uh, peace be upon him. Because when I saw the name Jesus first, I, that really intrigued me. I wanted to see what does this book have to say about Jesus. And I read the, the story in, 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 in Ali Imran, and I read the story in Surah Al Maryam. And it was so, it was, it was more beautiful than anything I had ever read in the New Testament or any, any nativity story that I had ever heard. It was more beautiful than that times ten. Uh, the, I remember the only thing that I could capture in my mind was the miracle of how. Uh, because in the Bible, you never really figure out the conflict of how Mary gets over this this um, point, finger pointing at her about her coming with a with a baby and she's not married. Uh, there's no real end to that. There's no real defense for her uh, from this in, in in the New Testament. But the Quran is so explicit and so clear that the Jesus' first miracle was to speak from the womb as a to speak as a baby. And defend the honor of his mother, something that you cannot deny, something that you cannot deny about her, who Mary was, when you have this baby speaking on her behalf. So, I would say, I read the Quran entirely in three days, but that first night, after I had made it through Surah Al-Ali Imran, my heart was already given to this book. I, I, I didn't know what it meant to be a Muslim, I didn't know how, how to be a Muslim, I didn't even know what that meant, uh, but I knew that whoever it was that followed this book, I wanted to be like these people. Uh, I wanted to be like the people that I read about in this book. Uh, these were people I could follow. These were prophets. This was a book of guidance. And this was something that the book is calling and appealing to me. That if you don't believe in this book, you never see that. I've never seen this in any other scripture. The direct challenges that are in the Quran. That if you don't believe this book is true, put it to the test. Put it to the test. And this was something that was so astounding to me. That... God is telling you over and over again, if you don't believe this is the truth, test it. Bring me something else like it. Test it. Put it to test. If it was written, if there was more than, I mean, all of the analogies about God, everything was so logical, so rational, so reasonable in my mind that it was like 2 plus 2 equals 4 and that was it. There was no 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3, egg, yolk, water, fight. There was none of that foolishness. The Quran was very direct and very straightforward in its teachings. So I gave my heart to Islam uh, that night in, uh, in my living room reading the Quran and you know, and I, I cried and cried you know, that I had been looking for the truth all this time, had searched all this way and it was right across the street, right across the street from my